Right now, we are joined by Capitol Police Chief Manger, who uh, oversaw uh, the security for this commemoration today for this anniversary. And obviously, Capitol Police right, was right at the center of what happened on January 6th and defending this Capitol, defending lawmakers who were inside this building at the time. I have to ask you for today, sir, uh, in your view, how was it and how did it go? It was a very peaceful day, uh, which is what we were uh, hoping for. And um, we, uh, we had quite a few people out here working. Uh, we wanted to make sure that um, that folks were able to, to do all. There's a lot of events going on, a lot of demonstrations going on around the, the campus today. We wanted to make sure that everybody could just um, have an event peacefully, and and, uh, and today worked out um, just as we planned. I know you spoke uh, before this day, and you said there were no credible threats, uh, no online chatter like we heard a year ago um, before January 6th. Um, did that change anything about how you approach this day? Well, you always, you always look at your intelligence, and you have to make decisions about, um, with what you know, how does it impact your plans and what we call actionable intelligence. So um, we looked at um, the, the chatter that was going on. There were a few things. Didn't seem very, some of them were, um, I think, not credible. Um, but we certainly paid attention to everything, all the information that, that came to our attention. Um, so that's why we had uh, a fair amount of people working here today, and we knew that we had, um, I think, five demonstrations either on the campus or right adjacent to our campus. Um, so again, we just want to make sure that uh, everybody was able to have their events peacefully and that there were no issues. And, and you know, we had a few things that occurred today, but they were minor things. Things. And um, uh, so, but all together, it was a very peaceful day. Those minor things, can you go into any more detail about those and why they caused any? Yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, you know, a couple of people here and there that were um, uh, engaging in some some concerning behavior, and uh, we were able to talk to them, find out what was going on, and, and make sure everything was okay. But uh, we got a couple of calls from um, residents, from witnesses, from people walking around saying, hey, I'm, I'm seeing somebody, and they're, um, you know, uh, they're doing things that are suspicious to me. We checked them all out. Everything was fine. Um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, Capitol Police officers were right there. Uh, in the center of this, they were assaulted. Uh, you have members of the force who lost their lives, which in the aftermath as well uh, of January 6th. I'm curious for you, what was going through your mind as a new police chief here, and not the chief at the time of this incident, as you reflected on the day, I knew that that we need uh, to restore confidence in the Capitol Police Department. We need to restore the confidence of the members of Congress, but I also I also think that we need to restore the confidence of our officers here. They need to know that the department is ready for what's going on. They need to know that um, we're prepared ahead of time for what might occur. They need to have the equipment, the training, and they need, they, so they need to have confidence in the leadership of this police department. So as much as anything, we're trying to make sure that we're demonstrating to our men and women of this department that um, we're preparing them, we're going to give them everything they need to do their job. You know, they didn't, they did not fail on January 6th. Their courage, their bravery on January 6th was, um, was amazing. Um, but there were there were some failures a year ago. We want to make sure that they understand that we're not going to allow that to happen again. But with the emotion of the day, your thoughts on how the men and women of Capitol Police handle today? Um, you know, I, I uh, spend a lot of time um, walking around the campus, talking to my officers, and um, uh, very different, um, I think a very different outlook um, about today as they looked around, saw the planning that went into uh, w what we have here today, um, saw that uh, we were prepared for anything that might occur, and I think that gave them a sense of, of confidence that um, this is the way things should be every day. So, um, so I, I was very pleased with um, the conversations that I had with my cops today, and, and um, uh, had some very nice comments from them as well. So, I, I do think that um, they're feeling like that uh, the department is making the improvements it needs to make. Final question for you, what does your department need to protect this citadel of American democracy 
after today? You know, the, the biggest challenge that we have is our staffing. We've lost a lot of people um, uh, after January 6th. We had a, a year that the, 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 our training center was closed because of COVID. So between the, the attrition uh, going through the roof, not being able to put new recruits through um, a year ago, um, we find ourselves uh, over 400 officers below where we need. So our biggest challenge, and, we, and we're going to make sure we meet that challenge, is to ensure that we get get up to staffing uh, as quickly as we can. And with being the man who's tasked to come in here and fix a lot of those issues from taking on those recommendations, those 100 recommendations, I know you've done dozens of recommendations so far, but as the man who's tasked to come in here and kind of make over this Capitol Police and make sure they protect this building, this property, the lawmakers inside, the staff inside, um, huge undertaking? There's a lot of pressure to get this right. And, and we've got to get it right. And I've got, I've got good people that are um, uh, working in, uh, as a team um, to, to ensure that we as a department uh, get us to where we need to be. But there is a tremendous amount of pressure to get this right. The, the pressure from the members of Congress, pressure from uh, the men and women of the police department, and pressure from the public. I don't think the public wants to um, see what ha occurred a year ago ever happen again. And so we, we have a responsibility to, to get this right, and we're going to do it. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. All right. Chief Thomas Manger, thank you, thank you a lot. We right, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks. Um, a lot of people thinking about the Capitol Police uh, today, obviously, Terry, because of those images that we saw on the other side of that Capitol. And as you saw the lawmakers behind me here reflecting, having this prayer vigil, it was about those men and women who stood there to defend democracy, to defend this building, uh, which is so symbolic, I can't even put it into words. Uh, but a lot of people were thinking about Capitol Police today and the lives that were lost. Terry. Absolutely, Kenneth. And important to remember also, they won the day. At the end of the day, the invaders were driven out and the legislators were protected and they completed their business. Kenneth Moten, thanks for that. Thanks for that interview as well. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.